Hello, my name is Matthew Wing and I'm an educator here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. And today, we're gonna to talk about the United States Marine Corps in the First World War. World War I was unlike any war the world had ever seen. It involved more than 50 countries and took place on every continent besides Antarctica. Although the United States was only involved in the war for a little over a year, it still cost the lives of over 116,000 Americans, including 2,500 United States Marines. So today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the origins of World War I in Europe, the origins of United States involvement in 1917, and the role of the United States Marine Corps in that conflict. A lot happened before 1914. How did Europe descend into a world war? In order to understand how, there are a number of definitions that help better explain the state of European countries before the outbreak of war. Let's define them and talk a little bit about each one within the context of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Nationalism. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, European countries grew entirely devoted to the interests of their own nations, especially as competition for colonies increased among European countries. This graphic shows three forms of media depicting various forms of nationalism in the mid to late 19th century. A figure representing Germany for German unification in 1871, Giuseppe Garibaldi and Italian unification from 1815 to 1871, and British nationalism. Militarism. Many of these countries felt they should have a strong military to match their own national interests, so we see a strong increase in militarism in Europe. In the years before World War I, Britain and Germany built up their navies, and countries like Russia and Germany increased the size of their armies. As each country increased in size of military and own national interests, there grew a desire to spread both around the world, thus getting to our third definition, imperialism. Imperialism in the context of the First World War meant the rapid expansion of territories, or colonies, by European powers in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The influence and creation of new technologies during the time required more resources, so many countries tapped into uncharted territory to exploit them, especially in Africa and Asia. European powers met in Berlin in 1884 to carve out these resource-rich countries. We see an example here with a political cartoon called The Rhodes Colossus, depicting British colonialist Cecil Rhodes as a giant standing over the entire African continent. Alliances Although each European power wanted their own possessions, ties of nationalism did align to specific groups of individuals, some of which were regional. This brought about the idea of alliances. An alliance is a union or association formed for mutual benefit, especially between countries or organizations. These alliances by definition meant an attack on one would mean an attack on all, which would eventually provide the tipping point to war in 1914. We see a number of these alliances. The Triple Alliance in 1882 between Austria-Hungary, Germany, and Italy. The Triple Entente in 1907 between France, Great Britain, and Russia. In this image, the upper inscription reads Concord. Shown are the female personifications of France, Russia, and Britain, the Triple Entente allies of the First World War. These mutual defense agreements continued to increase in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. We have alliances between Russia and Serbia, Germany and Austria-Hungary, France and Russia, Britain, France, and Belgium, and Japan and Britain. This brings us into the question of the United States. Was the United States immune to ideas of nationalism and imperialism during this time? Unfortunately not. America's first foray into imperialism occurred during the Spanish-American War in 1898. The United States went to war in an effort to quell the rising tensions with Spain, especially after the sinking of USS Maine in 1898. Other reasons include the protection of American business interests in Cuba, support of Cuban rebels to gain independence from Spain, and exaggerated news reports and events better known as yellow journalism. 
One of the most important figures of this progressive era in United States history was Theodore Roosevelt. During his presidency, big stick policy dominated American social and political thought. The Roosevelt corollary to the Monroe Doctrine gave the right to interfere in economic matters of nations in the Americas and set up the United States as an international police power. In essence, it was a way to block European powers from interfering in Latin American countries. Things began to change once Woodrow Wilson took office in 1912. Despite the gathering storm in Europe, Wilson and the United States began a period of isolationism after his presidency. What event lit the powder keg? What caused all of the alliances to act in accordance and declare war? That event occurred in June 1914. On 28 June 1914, Gavrilo Princip and a group called the Black Hand assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne in Sarajevo. As a result of this action, Austria-Hungary issued an ultimatum to the Kingdom of Serbia, which was rejected. It eventually led to a declaration of war in late July 1914, which triggered action from European nations. From there, everything began to spiral out of control. Russia mobilized against Austria-Hungary, causing friction between Germany and Russia. By August, Germany declared war on Russia. Germany demanded France to be neutral, so by 3 August, France and Germany declared war on each other, which brought in the British and the rest of the Triple Entente. Nations rallied on both sides into two camps, the Allied Powers and the Central Powers. Take a look at this map. We've marked all of the Central and Allied Powers before American entry in 1917. Can you name all of the Central and Allied Powers? The Central Powers are Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, Germany, and Bulgaria, marked here. What about the Allied Powers? The Allied Powers are Britain, France, Russia, Serbia, and Belgium. Initial fighting spread across Europe, but soon the war bogged down into a three-year stalemate. There were many major battles of the war before the United States entered. This map shows several. Tannenberg, 26 to 30 August 1914. The Battle of the Marne, 6 to 10 September 1914. Gallipoli, 19 February 1915 to 9 January 1916. The Somme, 1 July to 18 November 1916. And Verdun, 21 February to 18 December 1916. Technology played a huge role during World War I. Some of the major advances used and utilized during World War I were submarines, poison gas, tanks, machine guns, trench warfare, and propaganda. Submarines became a key factor in the war by February 1915, when Germany declared a submarine blockade of Great Britain. Poison gas was a major contributor behind World War I casualties. By 1915, Germany unveiled poisonous chlorine gas, eventually developing the more deadly mustard gas. Gas was heavier than air and could settle in trenches, which was very deadly. Because of this, Marines began to train for chemical attacks and have carried a gas mask in every subsequent war. Tanks replaced horse-drawn vehicles for movement of troops, artillery, ammunition, supplies, and the evacuation of wounded. Machine guns and trench warfare went hand in hand. Although trench warfare was not a new concept in combat, the addition of machine guns made it especially deadly. Propaganda, and specifically propaganda posters, dehumanized the enemy on both sides of the Central and Allied powers. This first section discussed the origins of World War I in Europe, the role of the United States in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and how and why European powers fought against one another in 1914. Part 2 will discuss American entry during World War I in April 1917. Take it on the 
run, on the run, on the run.